It's 5.45 p.m. Eastern Time, which means it's time for BCTV's Weekly Media Roundup. I'm tonight's host, Roland Boyden, alongside co-host Adam Hinckley. Plenty of stories will go through all the area headlines, including House Speaker Shep Smith's trip to town to hand out the annual Tim O'Connor Award, uh, which went to Masabi LLC, the group behind the Rebirth Project at the Brooks House. We'll also uh, touch base with the Vermont delegation in Washington as they look to push some new laws that involve Vermont rivers and much, much more. So if you've got the time and the attention, Attention span, stick with us right here on 545 Live. Welcome back to this February 28th, 2014 edition of 545 Live. Uh, in just a few short hours, we'll put this month of February behind us, and hopefully with it, uh, this winter weather, though. Who knows uh, if that'll really happen here in Vermont. Anyway, Adam, thanks for joining me at the desk once more. Into the stories we go. Let's break it down on another week of news here in Brattleboro and surrounding areas. Today we'll kick off with our Reformer Roundup, powered by the Tout.com channel of the Brattleboro Reformer, where their reporters and photographers can upload short video clips from the field on the go as they report, including clips of this week's annual Timothy O'Connor Award presentation at the River Garden, which featured Vermont House Speaker Shep Smith, who was on hand to present this year's winners, the team behind the rebirth of the Brooks House known as the investment group Masabi LLC, and headed by area notables Bob Stevens and Craig Miskovich. This year increased the downtown tax credits by $500,000 in a tough budget year because we know we need to make more investments in our downtowns because it makes sense from a carbon perspective, it makes sense from a development perspective, and most importantly, it makes sense for communities. Just uh, a little bit of the video of this week's presentation of the annual Timothy O'Connor Award, hosted at the Brooks House this week, presenting Masabi LLC uh, with the award for their work uh, getting the Brooks House renovations underway in Brattleboro. Now, uh, there's plenty of BCTV videos to follow along as you uh, take a look at the Brooks House through time, starting with uh, a tremendous amount of footage of that tragic downtown fire all the way through the various uh, uh, proposals for putting the project back together, fundraising, and more, including uh, last summer's Young Newsmakers coverage as the governor was in town. You were uh, one of the techs uh, wrangling the kids and the cameras at the Young Newsmakers summer camp last year, Adam. You may recall the downtown visit from the governor as we uh, got to interview uh, him when he was here for what uh, the script, I believe, called an annual wall whacking as they, uh, or uh, inaugural wall whacking, as they uh, came in to knock down ceremoniously, knock down a little bit of the wall. Well, I'll just let the video do the talking here. Roll it. We're reporting that Governor Peter Shumlin has joined them in celebrating the rebuilding of the historic Brooks House. Thanks, Velasta. From there, we'll move on to our Commons News Report, utilizing the official website of Brattleboro's weekly independent newspaper, The Commons, much in the same way any member of the public can, by going to commonsnews.org, where a myriad of opinion pieces, in addition to staff and freelance articles, often provide a terrific follow-up for us here as we piece together local stories. Today's 545 Live Commons News Report harkens back to last month's top story in Putney. Broadband and cell communication giant AT&T's proposed cell tower, which would bring much sought-after high-speed cell phone coverage to the Putney area, but at an aesthetic price. Today's opinion piece in the Voices section and the Commons, which you can find at newsstands all around town or here on commonsnews.org, as we'll fire it up in the split screen here, is dubbed Putney Shouldn't Allow AT&T Dog and Pony Show. 
Uh, the Commons' recent report about AT&T's efforts to woo the good people of Putney was especially revealing by the AT&T representative's caveat that the town's permission for the application and its protest, if any is lodged, would have little apparent weight in the state's decision. As Newfane learned, regardless of what the public might want, AT&T will trust its union-busting anti-democratic law firm Downs Rackland Martin to do the legwork to ensure that the Public Service Board grants permission without worrying about pesky local concerns. Uh, so that's just one of their Voices Opinion pieces. For more, if you want to do the research yourself, find out what you think, you can head to brattleborotv.org and check out uh, this past month's recent series of AT&T open forums, which include representatives from the law firm mentioned there and uh, also reps from AT&T and the state talking about uh, this issue. We've got a few sum up uh, rewind in time clips to take a look at here. There are steps to, to address concerns dealing with aesthetics um, and so um, I don't think there's a better site in Putney. It doesn't mean there isn't another site that might work, um, but a lot of things have to go right to even get where we are, and I know I've said that a couple times, right? But this is a good location. Next up, all three Vermont's Washington delegation members are pushing legislation that would designate the upper Missisquoi and Trout Rivers in Vermont as part of the National Wild and scenic river system, with Senator Bernie Sanders successfully passing the move through the Senate's Energy and Natural Resources Committee. While this week, Vermont's lone House Representative Peter Welch took the to the floor to attempt passage in his own branch of government. And now, we'll take a look at that. There's 35.1 miles uh, of the upper Missisquoi that would be designated, and there's 11 miles of its major tributary, the Trout River, that would be designated. And among the things that make these unique is that they're, they go through unspoiled farmland. They have some of the best fishing uh, in Vermont or New England. The Trout River is a good place to catch, as you might expect, trout. Uh, we've got what in Vermont are considered to be uh, very large waterfalls. The National Wild and Scenic River System was established in 1968 to recognize and preserve rivers with exceptional scenic and recreational value. Forty states have rivers listed in the Wild and Scenic River System, but the Missisquoi and Trout Rivers would be Vermont's first, should that legislation make it through the House on uh, the hand of Rep. Peter Welsh. Next up, uh, next week we'll mark another Banner Day of Productions for the region's lone TV station as BCTV prepares to deliver seven cameras and seven crews to every one of the seven surrounding towns we serve, including Vernon, Guilford, Dumberston, Putney, Newfane, Townsend, and Jamaica. And the result, the true New England experience of Town Meeting times seven. Moderation is a lot like medicine. In addition to being Election Day, March 5th was of course Town Meeting Day. It is not an exact science. With news like Guilford's decision to disband their middle school. Because this is such a touchy issue, I'm going to give facts. And Putney's move to adopt a full-time law enforcement officer. The first three years were paid for on a federal grant. The current year, the Putney paid the, the match amount. Joining visits from Governor Shumlin and all sorts of other Wyndham County legislators in the headlines. Are we smart, considering Vermont Yankee, in taking a state that's cheap to litigate, that has to repay legal expenses, and that has already made the decision on this question? And speaking of town meeting, a representative town meeting may carry a different feel for residents in Brattleboro, but a series of controversial items on this year's warning may garner viewer attention this March nonetheless, something we spoke with 2011 three-year seat winner and current select board chair David Gartenstein about last week as he joined us in our downtown studios for a special 545 Live exclusive interview, breaking down the proposed 1% option tax that's set to hit the town meeting members in March after going to the town at large via Australian ballot. When we have many more people in town during the day than the people who live and sleep here, we need more police, we need more fire services, we need more attention to roads and other uh, uh, services than outlying towns require. And so we need to look at the ways in which revenues are generated. 
Next up, we all know he dabbles with narcissism here, here and there, but 545 Live co-host Roland Borden has other more laudable reasons for hosting BCTV's weekly interactive video calendar, like joining area business, the Brattle World Savings, and loan in their mission of promoting area nonprofits, groups, and events in a new way, a new and engaging way, and getting to green screen out tufts of Roland's hair at the same time. Over to you, Roland. That will move on and head on over to Dummerston and over to Sunday, March 2nd. To take a look at the Pampered Chef Fun Fundraiser. Uh, this is all set to kick off at the Dummerston Community Center at 12.30 p.m. on Sunday, March 2nd. For more, let's take a look at the spotlight video. And from there, we'll move ahead and talk about the Latches as they get set to host the National Theater's live performance of Frankenstein starring Sherlock star Benedict Cumberbatch. He's going to be uh, on stage in D.C. as part of the, that live performance, but it'll be uh, transmitted in full high definition to the Latches Theater, so be sure to check that out again 1 p.m. Uh, this coming Monday, March 3rd at the Latches Theater. You can find out more by clicking that link. And before we say adieu to the calendar altogether, you can also click that button in the bottom right corner that says your event here. Find out how to get your own organization, nonprofit, and events uh, listed as part of the video calendar. Maybe even get me to chit chat away about the events. That button will take you to the landing page at brettlebrotv.org uh, for this here video calendar feature so that you can find out how to get involved. Okay, well, that's all we have for you today at 545 Live. And thank you for watching. And if you stuck with us this long, we really appreciate it. And we'll see you next week.